Perfecting difficulty is one of the most important aspects of game design. We play games to enjoy ourselves, but a lot of that enjoyment stems from the challenges that games present to us. There are exceptions to this, but generally speaking, an experience that is too difficult or not challenging enough can really hurt the feel of the game. Difficulty is all about nailing that sweet spot, and many games opt for different strategies to obtain this. Dark Souls is extremely challenging, but that's how it's meant to be played. F1 games present us with a slider of over 100 difficulty options. And there are games like Halo 2, when excluding skulls, there are four simple difficulty options, ranging from easy to legendary. Each system has their own pros and cons, with Halo 2's system being identical to its predecessor. And yet, Halo Combat Evolved had no problems regarding difficulty. In fact, in that regard, it was near perfection. So why is it that Halo 2's difficulty seems to range between a walk in the park to getting hunted by hitmen? Well, to understand why, we need to explore Halo 2's development, which was anything but a walk in the park. One of the things I always say when people talk about crunch now, is that the crunch we do now is the good kind of crunch. It's the crunch where you are putting in the hours because you really want to, because you know it's going to make the game better. The crunch on Halo 2 was, oh my god, we're fucked, we're all going to die. Chris Butcher, the engineering lead on Halo 2, summarises perfectly how dreadful the development cycle was for Bungie's sequel to their generational first success. Halo had never planned to be a trilogy, but after Combat Evolved popularised the first person shooter genre on consoles, Halo had now become the flagship title for Xbox and Microsoft, who were keen to release a second game as soon as possible. This was conflicting with Bungie's overambition, which was hampering development in every department. Writer Joseph Staden put it best when he said, Then we just ploughed ahead, much like we'd done with Halo, with one notable exception. We ordered ourselves a giant sandwich, took a bite, but didn't realise how big it was before we started. And we did that across the board, technically, artistically, and story-wise. But of course, we didn't figure that out until way too late. This was most evident when Bungie showed off Halo 2 at E3 2003. What they presented blew fans away, but it was all smoke and mirrors. Many elements of the trailer were not game ready. The entire graphics engine used in the footage had to be discarded, and the trailer's environment never appeared in the final game due to limitations on how big the environments could be. Features like vehicle hijacking were entirely scripted, and in order to keep performance at an acceptable level, a Bungie staff member deleted objects from the game as the player passed through. When they returned back to their studio in Washington, they realised that much of the work they had produced in the last two years would have to be scrapped. What followed was a frantic crunch in order to get the game ready for its 2004 release. Many assets and ideas were cut, but most importantly, something must have happened during this time period that affected the difficulty of the campaign. It's unsure what exactly that was, but many people speculate that the campaign was initially too easy, and as a result, Bungie just amped up the difficulty of everything, as they had little time to perform proper rebalancing. After all, this was at a time when games were 100% finished at launch. Remember those days? But what makes Halo 2's campaign so difficult? After all, we're still using the same weapons and fighting the same enemies as Combat Evolved. Well, our first problem is Master Chief. Sir, permission to leave the station. For what purpose, Master Chief? To give the Covenant back their bomb. Permission granted. You know the man. He has no issue riding a bomb through space before detonating it inside a Covenant supercarrier. Well, in Halo 2, he's a little bitch. The simple truth is that he is extensively weaker than he was in Combat Evolved. Chief now just has shields and cannot manage his health with health packs 
like before. This, in conjunction with weaker shields, means the player cannot aggressively attack enemies like he once could. Ignoring the fact that this creates a terrible disconnect between the chief you play as and the chief you watch in cutscenes. This also means the player understandably plays like a bitch because hiding behind cover and picking enemies off one by one is now your go-to strategy. And this moves us nicely into our second problem, hard pings. Hard pings are methods used to kill enemies that are quick and consistent. They differ from standard gameplay in that they are normally ways to kill enemies that the designer has not intended the player to utilize, or at least utilize consistently. Halo has a varied sandbox with multiple types of weaponry, and yet, whilst playing Halo 2 on harder difficulties, your two favorite weapons will be a precision weapon and a plasma pistol. Use the plasma pistol to take out an elite's shield, and then headshot him from range using your precision weapon. Gone are the days of mowing down Covenant with your assault rifle, or charging at them with your shotgun. Halo 2's difficulty encourages a slower, more precise method to take out your opponents, which is a far cry from the assertive gameplay from Combat Evolved. Your Master Chief, after all, a super soldier. You should not be cowering behind cover, taking enemies out one by one. Speaking of enemies, it may surprise you to learn that they are actually very similar to Combat Evolved. It never feels that way because you're always two seconds of heat away from dying, but other than the ridiculous health of a charging brute, the enemies are fairly balanced. Except for these guys. Jackal snipers epitomize everything wrong with Halo 2's difficulty. They are without a doubt one of the most difficult, infuriating, and controller breaking enemies you will ever come across. They have laser precision and their shots are nearly always insta-kills to the head. What more, these little bastards are everywhere. You'll have to die to them a couple of times before you learn their spawns and take them out before they decimate you. Of course, this further promotes hard pings, as you'll be terrified entering a new area, searching high and low for these baby assassins. The level design in Halo 2 is an undeniable downgrade to Combat Evolved. Gone are the wide open spaces and level of freedom that we're used to. This is probably due to Halo 2's development, but you may be asking how this affects difficulty. Well, take the mission Cairo Station, for example. This is very similar to the Pillar of Autumn from Combat Evolved. Although they are both set in tight, linear corridors, the key difference between both levels is that the Pillar of Autumn presents the player with more options to approach a gunfight. This is great for replayability, but it also helps the Pillar of Autumn create a fairer gameplay experience. If one strategy doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. The player can try a different path, many of which lead to interesting outcomes. In Halo 2, it's generally a case of replaying the same strategy and repetitively learning until it works. This is partly why Halo 2 feels so infuriating to play. It's so annoying to have to battle through the same extremely difficult encounters over and over again. Overall, Halo 2's campaign is still an experience that I would highly recommend to anyone. And whilst the difficulty of Legendary is absurd, playing through it on any other difficulty feels like any other standard Halo campaign. It still has an exceptional story and some engaging gameplay beats. I guess it's just disappointing that it can't be enjoyed to its full potential on the hardest difficulty. This is all down to the development of Halo 2, and both other games in the trilogy prove that Bungie knows how to produce a fair difficulty in campaign. The game serves as a reminder that, no matter how talented your development team is, time is so crucial when it comes to game design. I've no doubt that, with an extra year, Halo 2's difficulty would have been nailed, and we may have even seen much of the scrapped content added to the game. With Halo Infinite being delayed until next year, perhaps that extra time will prevent a scenario similar 
to the one we saw over 15 years ago now. To quote Shigeru Miyamoto, fuck jackal snipers. <laughs>